Hello. Alright. Uh, okay. So, from 4, chapter 4, uh, Heat, Understanding the Gas Law. This is the first part and the last subtopic for this chapter. Okay. So, at the end of this video, you'll be able to explain gas pressure, temperature, and volume in terms of behavior of the gas molecules. We will be able to determine the relationship between pressure and volume at constant temperature for a fixed mass of gas where, by PV equals constant. We'll be able to determine the relationship between volume and temperature at constant pressure for a fixed mass of gas, which is V over T equals to constant. Determine the relationship between pressure and temperature at a constant volume for a fixed mass of gas, P over T equals to constant and explain absolute zero, absolute or Kelvin scale of temperature. So let's start. Gas law. Properties of gas. The behavior of a gas in a closed container depends on three properties of gas. Volume, temperature, pressure, while taking into account that the total number of gas molecules and the mass of the gas are fixed. So we're going to be talking about volume, temperature, and pressure. So before we start, kinetic theory of gases consists of the following assumptions. 1. All the gases are made up of atoms or molecules. 2. All atoms or molecules move randomly and haphazardly, right? Because they are gas, isn't it? They move randomly. Number three, the volume of the atom or molecule is negligible compared to the volume occupied by the gas, which means if let's just say this particular dot of my pointer here is the volume of the atom and the white color screen is the container. So the volume occupied by the gas, which means this whole entire container's volume is more significant compared to the volume of the small atom. Right. The molecules are in contact motion. The molecules undergo perfect elastic collisions with each other and with the walls of the container. 5. The intermolecular forces are negligible except during the collisions. The time of collision between the molecules is negligible compared to the time between the collision because when they hit each other, it is more... Uh, the time is very short compared to when it's traveling all over the place. 7. Atoms or molecules move with constant velocity between the collision, and gravity has no effect on the molecular motion. So the gas molecules is not affected by the gravity coming downwards. Alright, so property of gas, the first one is volume. SI unit for volume is meter cube, or we normally use the symbol m to the power of 3. Explanation based on the kinetic theory of matter, the volume. The gas molecules are moving freely and fills up the space of the whole container. So volume of the gas, we assume it to be equal to the volume of the container. Temperature with the SI unit Kelvin. Explanation based on the kinetic theory of matter. Molecules are always moving in random motion and have average kinetic energy. So when the temperature increases, Gas molecule will move faster due to higher kinetic energy. So temperature increases, velocity will increase, hence kinetic energy also increase. Finally, pressure, SI unit, Pascal, capital P small a, or Newton per meter square. When gas molecules move randomly and continuously hits the wall of the container, right, a force is exerted onto the wall. So pressure of the gas is the total force exerted on the wall divided by the area. Okay, absolute temperature. Absolute temperature is measured in Kelvin. All right. So if I have a volume versus temperature, and if the temperature unit is in Kelvin, this is a directly proportionate graph. But if it's a volume versus temperature, but the temperature unit is in degrees Celsius, the graph will actually be linearly increasing with the x-intercept at negative 273 degrees Celsius or at 0 Kelvin. Same thing goes to pressure. If it's pressure versus temperature with a unit Kelvin, it's a directly proportionate graph whereby it intercepts at the origin. 
but if it's a pressure versus temperature with a unit degree Celsius, it's linearly increasing, but the x intercept at negative 273 degrees Celsius or 0 Kelvin. So if I want to convert the temperature from degree Celsius to Kelvin, I use the temperature theta plus 273. But if I want to convert from Kelvin to degree Celsius, the temperature minus 273. Alright, absolute zero. It actually means that volume and pressure of gas is zero, kinetic energy of the gas molecule is zero, and gas molecules are stationary at this particular point. So absolute zero is the lowest possible temperature, which is negative 273 degrees Celsius or zero Kelvin. Alright, let's look over here. This particular condition, if you notice, the ball is actually pressing the balloon. When the balloon is compressed, the pressure increases. But when the balloon is not compressed, the pressure drops. And this condition, if you notice, the temperature is not related into this situation, isn't it? So this is actually the Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states, For a fixed amount of gas at a constant temperature, the gas pressure is inversely proportionate to the gas volume. All right, from this equation, pressure is inversely proportionate to volume. Or, PV equals to constant. If I have first condition and second situation, it's going to be P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. So this particular equation is for Boyle's Law. Alright, if you look, this is the equilibrium condition. If the volume decreases, I reduce the volume, the pressure inside the container will increase, comparing to this. But if I increase the volume instead, the pressure will drop. So, graph for Boyle's law, because it's pressure and volume, if the pressure unit is kilopascal and the volume is meter cubed, it will be an inversely proportionate graph. But if I want to have a directly proportionate, it's going to be pressure in kilopascal unit, 1 over volume, which means meter per meter cube or meter to the power of negative 3, it will be a directly proportionate graph. Application of Ball's Law Bubbles. Alright, you've seen this movie, this part is actually from Finding Nemo. Okay, what is this? Bubbles have to relate to Ball's law, right? If you notice in this, let's just say in a, an aquarium, we will notice the size of the bubbles gets bigger as it approaches the water surface. So, the deeper, uh, according to pressure in liquid, when the depth increases, means from the surface measuring downwards, when the depth increases, pressure of the liquid increases. So, when bubbles near the water surface, the depth of the water reduces or decreases, isn't it? The depth decreases. So when depth decreases, pressure decreases. Based on the concept of pressure in liquid, pressure equals to density, acceleration due to gravity and depth. When the depth of water decreases, water pressure also decreases. So when pressure decreases, the volume of the air bubbles increases. And as you can see, I've highlighted or I've changed the color of the keywords over here. So these are the keywords that you need to use when explaining why the size of the bubbles gets bigger as it approaches the water surface. Now next, let's see. At this picture over here, in ice water, the balloon is actually smaller in size. But in boiling water, the balloon actually bigger in size. How is this actually happens? And if you notice one thing, the balloon is really sealed, it's closed. So which means we cannot add the volume in. So according to Charles' law, for a fixed amount of gas at a constant pressure, gas volume is directly proportionate to its absolute temperature. So volume directly proportionate to temperature. As you can see, as the temperature increases, the volume increases. Or V over T is constant. So if we, if we have two conditions like this, V1 over T1 
equals to V2 over P2. Alright, the heating or cooling process, let's just say the pressure is at zero at this particular volume. If I reduce the volume or I reduce the temperature, the volume drops. If at higher temperature and this is allowed to move, the volume will increase in order to make sure that the pressure is stays the same, constant pressure. Charles law can be represented graphically as shown. Volume in meter cube unit over temperature in Kelvin. So volume is directly proportional to temperature. Over here with the condition the unit for temperature is Kelvin. But if the temperature is using the unit degree Celsius, volume will be linearly increasing and the x-intercept will be at negative 273 degrees Celsius at the absolute zero temperature. Application of Charles Law How does a hot air balloon rise? Okay, so how does a hot air balloon rise? Initially, hot air balloon uh, shape will be like this, isn't it? It's small in volume. Working principle, when air is heated up, collision between the gas molecules becomes stronger. So you heat it up, the collision of the gas molecules becomes stronger, and the average distance between the molecules increases because it hits stronger so it will move further away. The balloon will expand to a certain size. In order to maintain the air pressure in the balloon, a lot of air molecules are forced out of the balloon. So, when it goes heated up until a certain period of time, the density of the air inside the balloon is lower than the density of air outside the balloon. When this happens, the buoyant force is greater than its weight, and therefore the balloon rises. So this is actually how the hot air balloon rises up. Alright, the third gas law is actually gay lussex or pressure law. Right, the actual name of the law is actually gay lussex but for SPM level, we use the word pressure law. So pressure law actually states, for a fixed amount of gas at a constant volume, Gas pressure is directly proportionate to its absolute temperature. Okay, over here, pressure is directly proportionate to the absolute temperature. Absolute temperature, remember, it means that the unit will be in Kelvin. Right? Or pressure over temperature is equal to constant. Or if there's two K scenario, it would be P1 over T1 equals to P2 over C2. So let's just say example over here. Because the volume has to be fixed, right? When we lower the temperature, the pressure decreases. Right? Pressure, lower temperature, pressure decreases, volume is the same. But if the volume is the same, but we increase the temperature, it means that the pressure will also increase. So the relationship between the pressure and temperature does not depend on the type of gas being used. All right? It doesn't depend whether it's an inert gas or a normal gas. It doesn't depend. Okay? Whether it's nitrogen or it's air, the pressure will still be the same when the temperature increases the same. The pressure law can be represented graphically as shown below. Pressure unit Pascal versus temperature in the absolute temperature uh, unit, which is Kelvin, the graph will be a directly proportionate graph. But if pressure in Pascal but temperature in degrees Celsius, the graph will be a linearly increasing graph with an x-intercept at absolute zero, which is negative 273 degrees Celsius or zero Kelvin. Application of pressure law. How to cook food faster? Why? Using a pressure cooker. Okay, so working principle of a pressure cooker is based on principle of evaporation. When temperature inside the cooker increases, the volume is fixed, isn't it? The heat is transferred. Water will start to boil and converts into steam. Gas pressure increases due to the steam order, vapor. Temperature increases, pressure increases. So, when the temperature increases, the process of cooking gets faster. So this is the pressure cooker's uh, method on cooking, uh, sorry, cooking the food faster based on pressure law. 
Right, that's the end of part 4.4, Understanding Gas, part 1. Right, the next video, which is part 2, will explain more on how do we solve problems uh, using the gas laws. So, that's all for this video. Till we meet again, bye!